Hi, I'm May. And I'm Olivia. We're here with Grace, Alyssa, and Marlene. Hi, I'm Grace Lynn, and I'm the author and illustrator of these books for Storytelling Math. Hi, I'm Alyssa. I edit the Storytelling Math books. Hi, I'm Marlene. I'm the math advisor on the books. Welcome to the story behind Storytelling Math. Storytelling Math, how do stories and math go together? We can answer that question, Olivia. It all began with a need. When we looked around at what math picture books were available, we saw some big gaps. There are a lot with animal and white main characters, but few with main characters of color. We found that most books centered on counting or shapes, but there are other math topics that are also important for young children to experience. And most of the books out there were more about the math than about great stories. Storytelling math books are different in a few ways. They star main characters of color, and nearly all are written by own voices authors, so authors writing about their own cultures. They feature important but overlooked math topics like patterns and spatial relationships that research shows are important for young kids. And they feature stories that kids are going to want to read again and again. So Grace and I wanted to do board books together, but we couldn't figure out just the right topic. Then Marlene came to us with the idea of math picture books and board books. Yes, as Alyssa said, I've always wanted to do board books. Well, I've always wanted to do board books since I myself had a baby, and that was about eight years ago. And when my child was a baby, I would go to the bookstores and I would feel very frustrated because I felt like I couldn't find any board books that reflected my family. Uh, I saw lots of board books with animals, I saw lots of board books with uh, white characters, but I didn't see that many board books that had people that looked like me and my daughter in it. So I was very, very eager to do a board book that showed more of the diversity in this world. We kept hoping and hoping we could come up with something that would work for a board book. And then one day she called me up and she said, would you like to do math board books? And I thought, um, you mean like numbers? And she said, no. It's more than numbers. And that's the whole point of this series, that math is more than numbers, that math is all around us, that it's actually commonplace and it's not something to be intimidated with, which is actually my very first reaction when she came up to me and said math. I was like, ooh, I'm kind of scared of math. And she said, no, it's not something to be intimidated about. And that's what we want to teach kids and their parents. And now the first six storytelling math books are available. Look, May, it's us. And our friend Manny. We do all sorts of fun things together. Can you tell us about your books, Grace? So these are my books, and they feature three kids. May, who is the star of this one, Up to My Knees. And it's all about May growing a sunflower. It also includes Olivia. So this is a story about May and Olivia and how they have one marshmallow left between the two of them and how they have to figure out who gets the last marshmallow. And then we have this one that also features Olivia, which is called What Will Fit. And it's all about Olivia trying to find something that will perfectly fit inside of her basket. And lastly, there's this one called Circle Sphere, which features Manny, Olivia, and May, and how they blow bubbles. Wow, those sound like great stories. Can you read this one, Grace? Yes, I can. In fact, I read one of these books to some kids I know. I read this one, Circle Sphere. Let's take a look. You all know what a circle is, right? Yes. yes. All right, but Hugo, do you know what a sphere is? No. You don't? Well, let's find out in this book, Circle Sphere. Now, this book is about kids blowing bubbles. Have you guys blown bubbles before? Yeah. All right, let's see how they blow bubbles. Let's blow bubbles. Soapy water for us to share. A bubble wand for each of us. So many shapes. Circle, triangle, and heart. See, so the bubble wands are all these different shapes. There's a circle, there's a triangle, and there's a heart. What bubble shape will each wand make? My wand is a circle. 
I blow. My bubble is a ball, a sphere. So, Hugo, a ball is a sphere. Oh, okay. Olivia blows into the triangle. Do you think she's going to make a triangle bubble? No. I've never seen a bubble shaped like a triangle. Me neither. What shape will her bubble be? Oh, it's another ball. So if it's another ball, what kind, what is it, Hugo? It's sphere. It's another sphere. Will May blow a different shape? Oh, it's a ball too. What's a ball? A sphere. 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 Big sphere. bubbles, little bubbles. They are all balls. They are all? Spheres. Yes, they're all spheres. Pop, pop, pop. <laughs> and they all pop too. So, a circle is a flat shape, but a ball is a sphere. Is a sphere. That was great, thanks. I like that story, but where's the math? Young children learn about geometry by exploring the shapes of objects around them, just like the children in the book do. This story takes the everyday experience of blowing bubbles and highlights the opportunities for children to engage with ideas like round, flat, and spherical. And now, Grace is going to show you one of our downloadable activities that gets kids investigating this math further in a very hands-on way. Yes! I did the activity Squash It with those kids I know. Let's go take a look. What we're gonna do now is play a really fun game called Squash It. So what you're gonna do okay, is you make a, you can make a shape, make a shape out of your Play-Doh. Make a shape, so let's see, I'm gonna make a nice, I'm gonna make a nice ball. You can make any shape you want. I made a wheel. Now squash it, Hugo. What, what? what shape do you think it'll make when you squash it? What did it a make? A circle! I made three different cones. Wow! And they each one made what shape? A circle! Yay! That looks like fun. I can't wait to try it. Can we hear another story? Sure, Olivia. Here's one of my favorites, Leah and Luis by Anna Crespo and Giovanna Medeiros. I'll read the beginning of the story. Luis is always quick to brag. My tower is taller. Usually his sister doesn't mind. I know. Leah enjoys taking her time. But when they run downstairs to their family's store and pick their favorite Brazilian snacks, I want biscoito de polvilho, papai. Cochina de galena, please. Luis starts bragging. I have more. And Leah doesn't like it. So it's a story about sibling rivalry. But where's the math? Well, they want to know who has more. Well, to find out, like all young children, they first look at size. Which one looks bigger? They find that size involves length, width, and height. It looks like Louise has more. But next they consider amount. Leah has two croquettes, but Louise only has one bag. A hundred in the bag versus two croquettes. Hmm, then Leah realizes that one little biscoito is smaller and lighter than a croquette. They decide to compare by weighing, and Leah has more. Luis is sad, can Leah find a way to make it fair? So they both have the same? You'll have to read the book to find out. At the very end of the book is a Brazilian Portuguese glossary, more math information, and activity ideas. Both the author and illustrator of this story were born and raised in Brazil, so we have two own voices creators who can bring their authentic experiences to the story. As for the math, Leah and Louise explore measurement the way young children learn best, by hands-on comparison of sizes, amounts, and weights. In this book, as in all of our picture books, readers get to see children's mathematical thinking in action. 
I like Leah. I'm glad she won. Me too. What are the other stories about? And the animals would not sleep. It's bedtime for Marco and his stuffed animals. But the animals have other ideas. When Marco tries to put them away, they fly, swim, and slither right out of their bins. This story involves the math of sorting and classifying. Marco combines mathematical thinking and empathy as he explores different ways to group the animals so that they're all happy. In Luna's yum yum dim sum, Luna and her two brothers have six fluffy pork buns to share. But then, splat! Luna drops one. As the three children puzzle over how to share five buns, they grapple with division and fractions in a real-world context. In Bracelets for Bina's Brothers, Bina wants to make her brothers bracelets with special patterns for the Raksha Bandhan holiday. But it's harder than she thought. As Bina makes the bracelet, she explores patterns. Some researchers say that patterns are one of the most important math topics for young children. Future books include a wide array of math topics and cultures. The kid characters stargaze, play games, build a fort, and search for a lost pet. You can read more about the books on our Storytelling Math website. We'll keep on adding videos, activity ideas, and other fun goodies. Our downloadable activities appeal to a wide age range, as you saw in the video. And they're great for story times, whether in person or online. So read the stories of Storytelling Math. They're so much fun. They take math and show how it's commonplace and everyday, but still magical. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for joining us, everyone.